Good morning. Uh, welcome to Audio Mulch uh, tutorial number one. Audio Mulch well, uh, is a uh, software um, based for uh, sound generating stuff. It looks like a studio. We'll see this in a second. So, you download Audio Mulch from the Audio Mulch site. Uh, it's free for 60 days, including saving. After n the 30 days after, you can still use the program, but you can't save. After 90 days, there's this weird little voice that annoys you every once in a while. So you download it for, uh, I'm using a Mac, so I'm downloading it for Mac saving. Well, I basically don't need to download it because I already downloaded it. So um, you open it, I open it through the spotlight. Uh, you go into Audio Mulch and it says Audio Mulch Evaluation Version blah blah blah. You have 45 days remaining in your 50, 90 days evaluation period, but uh, in 15 days you'll have another 30 days without saving. You continue evaluation, gets into the program, and a whole new world reveals. This is the whole new world. Now, what we have here is uh, basically the studio interface um, object-based program, which means there are objects, you drag them on the screen and then you play around with them. The interface looks like this. Basically, uh, like in all other programs, you have the new file, saving, uh, sorry, opening and saving. When we start using the object, we have cut, copy, paste. Uh, undo, this is for the timeline which we will touch uh, much later because this program is just not really useful as um, something that generates uh, music to compose or something like that. But we'll get there because maybe you'll need playing samples and stuff like that which this might be helpful for timelines. Uh, recording, going back, looping, BPM, uh, MIDI and audio stuff. This are the interface uh, things, patcher closes. Uh, this would be the properties closes. This is the timeline. Uh, those three I have not touched yet, um, etc, etc. You have control over how it looks. It opens with the main sound out module which you'll need to get your sound out um, and let's do uh, the first basic um, drum set patch now this is how it looks you take the drums and you drag it into the patcher it shows you an object objects um, are like in a real studio connected by cables this is a cable you can drag it wherever you want, but you need to have somewhere to drag it to. What I do usually is just use with this um, um, mono two-channel mixer because it's the smallest. We're gonna need only mono, so we'll get to the first input with the cable. You drag it from the output to the input. Now what you can do is drag it to both the inputs. You'll have double the power, but it doesn't really change anything and you'd better be off with one mono output. Uh, from the mixer you have to go to the sound module and you can arrange them however you want. You can even, I think, no, here you can't do what I thought. Um, double click opens the actual effect um, interface. Uh, what's funny is that, well, it's not funny, it's very logical and it's very good they did it, but some sometimes you can forget. You open all the stuff that you just dragged into your patcher and you pump the volume up because every single um, effect like this has a volume, especially the generators. Um, the effects, some of them have them, some of them don't. It works with dry and wet stuff. Uh, which we'll get to later. So, you open the drum patch by, by double-clicking it, and you have a, vo a master volume and a volume for each one of the lines that you're going to load your samples in. Here, you need to pump channel 1 also up to, to hear something, and 
basically all our volumes are up except the the samples that we're going to run into the drum machine you well it's really everything's written you click to select it opens a browser uh, it's going to open for you on the basic um, um, folders of audio mulch which has some samples me I have uh, my collection of samples um, which are in the hardcore drums section so I'm having the old school drums um, and when you press them they actually uh, you can hear them or you can not hear them if you undo the autoplay um, and then you can just play them by clicking let's use uh, for starters, this one. Now, it's open, it tells you which sample it is, uh, and you start putting it on the timeline, so it sounds basically um, symmetric, we'll put uh, every fourth, and you press play. Now, it doesn't sound because we didn't pump the volume from channel 1 up, and here we have it. I don't know if you're able to hear it, but uh, you can see here that uh, it's sending. Now, uh, basically you do the same for other samples, I'm just gonna throw some in uh, really randomly, I have no idea how it's gonna sound, but this is what's nice with samplers, if you arrange them in a symmetric way, they always kind of work uh, and you press put the volumes up now we don't like this you click again it uh, it will erase them I prefer this one again this has to be somewhere else and you can play as much as you want the BPM here will control the BPM of your uh, music so you go up and you go there and if you go down you'll go very slow got it got it cool thanks have a nice day um, hope you enjoyed it next time we're gonna get into some um, drones sine waves uh, manipulations and will get to the effects eventually, which are very helpful and useful.